This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. Musk and Mark Zuckerberg, of course, are arguing about it, but there's no doubt that artificial intelligence has the power to change our lives in just so many ways. We're already beginning to see the first signs of that in India. We're also aware of the power of artificial intelligence and how we can harness it to solve some of the areas which are facing the biggest challenges for an India hungry for the best quality education. We've already seen access is a problem, but can AI uh, change that? Can our young rise up to the challenge? This, of course, is our focus over the next half an hour, where we speak to some uh, winners uh, who've taken part in an uh, AI challenge, and that was uh, taking place at IIT Delhi. What were the kind of challenges posed? What, more importantly, were the solutions? And what about groups that brought them together, like OpenEd.ai? Of course, the role of the government's think tank and people like Amitabh Kant in pushing the boundaries in helping a young India explore just what AI can do. Well, all of that and lots more coming up over the next uh, half hour. I'm Natasha Jogan. Let me introduce my panel to you right away. I'm joined by uh, Devashi Sharma, uh, Harsh Arya and Virandra. They were all the winners, in fact, uh, of that hackathon. Many congratulations. Also with us, someone who... Uh, got this entire uh, project together. Anshul Bhagi, uh, he's the co-founder and co-director of OpenEd.ai. This is a global non-profit solving problems in education. Uh, up first, let me just start with, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all about you. Uh, you know, Devashish, uh, the fact that this is using AI to solve challenges in, in education, it is very niche, but I would imagine it is very, very key. How did you get interested in what you're doing? Um, so, my team's background was uh, in computer science and we have worked with AI before, so we understood how to implement technology. Mm -hmm. But I think the opportunity was introduced to us by uh, Mr. Amitabh Kant. We uh, attended one of his lectures at the hackathon and he mentioned that the problem in India is uh, that high quality education is mm -hmm. still concentrated in major big cities. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of rural and small town kids have to migrate over there. Mm -hmm to get access to good quality teachers, right? Mm -hmm. With AI, it, it is possible to scale mm -hmm. the teaching methodologies of one good teacher mm -hmm. to anybody and everybody in this country. Mm -hmm. So that's that was the opportunity we went about and this is how we, um, this, this is what we wanted to build. Mm -hmm. So we, that, that's what we ended up building. Right now, every, uh, our, our uh, project works f to teach mathematics mm -hmm. in a customized and personalized way mm -hmm. so that any student mm -hmm. um, do not have to learn English to learn mathematics so they can learn it in their own language at a pace that they are comfortable with. That's fascinating. So basically, again, the issue of access. And we've seen what language barriers are doing. We've seen the whole language debate even at our top institutions like, say, the IITs and yeah. how there are a certain number of students, a certain kind of student who unfortunately gets left behind. Let me come back to you. Uh, Virandra, you know, there are all those, uh, you know, who would, the cynics perhaps, who would say, you know, but how do you get, again, technology and the access of just technology before we get into AI in a country like India comes with so many challenges? So... In, in that context, what role can AI play? What would you say? Actually, um, AI can be, uh, in most of the uh, cities, we all see that the learning through is through projectors mm -hmm. and uh, through screens and all. But we all see that in rural areas as well, the smartphones are all accessible. Mm -hmm. So we can take the these technologies and these apps to rural areas and uh, go into deep into India mm -hmm through the apps and all using cell phones. Even though some would say that there's still a question mark on how digital India really yeah, is. Yeah, but, exactly. But, but, uh, but uh, the problem is we have to make them understand better mm. how to use these apps mm -hmm. and we have to make mm. more uh, mm. user friendly for them to use these okay. apps. Okay. Harsh, what's been the biggest challenge and what do you believe has been your biggest success? Uh, the biggest challenge is to provide an interactive and adaptive experience for the student uh, to learn things. Mm. Uh, currently, there is a classroom model learning where the mm. students go learn and mm. just get out of the class. Mm. Uh, there is a f uh, average reading span is about 10 to 15 minutes. Mm. After that, you join out of the mm. class, then you come again for some seconds and then lost. Mm. 
after uh, delving into an hour you hardly get 30% of the material or mm -hmm. just get lost mm -hmm. so the major challenge is to make this learning experience interactive so that people can get hooked mm -hmm. to the material they are uh, mm -hmm. reading through mm -hmm. so the biggest challenge for me uh, in this hackathon is to build an application mm -hmm. that will engage user uh, to the reading that he is currently doing. I see and clearly you, you seem to have hit the nail on the head which is why of course all of you are winners but Anshul come in here at this stage like I said you know there's still a debate on artificial intelligence and on, on, on the boundaries really that man is really pushing Musk and Zuckerberg arguing about it at a, at a different level but how do you believe that AI can transform the education space I mean we're talking about access to everybody we're talking about language no bar we're talking about the ability to absorb more and make it more personal Sure. I would even expand your question. It's not about how can it. Hmm. I think it's it's a question of how it can transform and how it's ne it's a necessity hmm. to transform education in India. Hmm. I think Devashish got us to a really good start when he pointed out hmm. in Mr. Khan's words the, the challenge of scale with quality. Hmm. I think what AI can do, which no traditional technology has been able to do, is to provide that quality that Harsh is talking about the interactiveness, the engagingness, mm -hmm. while being able to scale at the cost of software. Because as you talk about rural India, you talk mm -hmm. about parts that aren't digital. Mm -hmm. We need more than ever technologies and solutions that are affordable Absolutely. to that group. Mm -hmm. And the benefit of AI mm -hmm. is that unlike any technology before it, it can provide high quality learning experiences in the case of education, mm -hmm. but even in other sectors mm -hmm. at a cost that the masses can afford. Okay. And this, this AI for Education hackathon, we open at AI, put it together exactly for that reason. Mm -hmm. Turns out there's a lot of research happening in AI. It mm -hmm. happens uh, in universities around the world. But that research is funded by, by companies that aren't working on education. They're working on low-hanging fruit or highly capitalized That's industries point, like right. autonomous vehicles, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to bring focus and smart people like the ones you have in your, in your room right now mm -hmm. We wanted to give them a chance to put their minds to the task of solving these problems. Okay, fair enough. With I, artificial intelligence. Okay, fair enough. Actually, this is just a, a, a quick question to that. What really was the kind of response? Because you know, you're talking about AI, you're talking about AI in Absolutely. education, making that very niche. What is the kind of response that you got? I mean, here, of course, are some of the winners, but uh, was it was it an overwhelming response? Were there loads of great ideas? What did this sort of reveal to you? A uh, very pleasantly surprising and overwhelming response. This was the first hackathon of its kind anywhere in the world. Nowhere have over a thousand people participated from universities around the world, 300 from IIT Delhi, 1100 from around the world, um, come together to solve problems that are very challenging problems to solve mm -hmm. with machine learning and artificial intelligence. First of all, ML, machine learning, and AI are very new fields. And second of all, for the reasons I was mentioning, it, the, the focus isn't on education, it's on, it's on other problems. So even though it was the first of its kind, we are very delighted that we had such a large showing for this hackathon. Okay, that's of course very encouraging, but uh, Pirandra, you know, uh, if I could just ask you, what really the point that Anshul is making is that lo loads of people who sort of say they're working on education, but perhaps going after, as he put it, low-hanging fruit. What really is the biggest challenge in, in your opinion? We've just seen the Prime Minister, the government reach out to young entrepreneurs and startups and among the areas they want them to focus is education. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that people like yourself can sort of fill this vacuum that we seem to have created? Definitely when we have opportunities here, we have, when Prime Minister is himself saying that we are more into mm -hmm. the entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship in India. Mm -hmm. So the the the, the talent in India are mm -hmm. sufficient mm -hmm. to solve the problems in India, mm -hmm. and we the what students. Do you miss? What do you believe more needs to be done? What can be done to support people like you more? So, the the students has to be more problem in the towards into problem solving rather mm -hmm. than going through textbooks and hooking through the textbooks. Mm -hmm. So they have to be more into uh, real life world problem solving. Mm -hmm. So like these hackathons help us to go into those areas. Mm -hmm. Okay, Devishit, many would say that that, of course, is the problem with the way our education system is actually structured right. at, at present. That, you know, you just have to go after the marks, it's 100% or nothing. Right. So students very often don't have a choice. The point uh, that which was making is, of course, you know, think beyond just those books. Right. But again, uh, you know, it could be argued that is that really possible? Does our education system even allow for that? Is there any space for that? Um, I think, um, historically speaking, uh, when, I, like when I was in high school, mm. 
I was in CBSE and the curriculum was very well structured but mm -hmm. now that um, recent I think in the last three four years I've seen a lot of redesigning of a lot of things have happened for example the Atal Innovation Mission mm -hmm. have started tinkering labs so this was a new development I got to know recently mm -hmm. and uh, my high school is participating in it mm -hmm. so now that I see that uh, the kids over there so I'm a very active member of my high school trying to organize a lot of things mm -hmm. uh, now with this uh, initiated by the government and a lot of uh, support from their side we are able to for the first time teach 3d printing to a grade 6 student I see. right which was not possible when i was in high school mm -hmm. right so starting where did you study uh, i studied in amity international school I see. gurgaon I see. okay right so over there when i was in high school we used to crave like used to go out of the way uh, mm -hmm. uh, attend alternative schools you know to learn coding mm -hmm. and now 3d printing which is a cutting edge technology which is so again the access is, access is, is, is being solved mm -hmm. in in a certain way i think it will take time mm -hmm. but i see uh, good initiatives taking uh, pl taking place in the lower level mm -hmm. like in the root level of, mm -hmm. of education mm -hmm. uh, and um, I'm sure like it will definitely crawl up towards the higher education when we talk okay. about colleges. Okay, okay. But that's, that, that's of course also very important, isn't it Anshul? Because again, uh, you know, it's the bottom of the pyramid that always tends to lose out. You know, at, at the top, of course, there are plenty of opportunities and, you know, if you have deep pockets, if you can afford it, then the best opportunities are there for you. But bottom of the pyramid, is yep. that what AI can target? Are those the students that AI can sort of open a new, whole new window and world to? Sure. Uh, let me get a term here that's very popular in the AI community. It's called personalization. Hmm. And if you think about personalization, it's by no means an education specific term, but it means that it's it's a solution that is specific to where you are right now. Mm -hmm. And and so, Natasha, you're asking the question, is it just for the rural community? I believe that personalization, which is enabled by AI, can impact every individual, no matter where they are, mm -hmm. whether it is the base of the pyramid, as you described, mm -hmm. or anywhere else in the pyramid. And the nice thing about AI is you don't have to trade one mm -hmm. end of the pyramid for the other. You get benefits at each level because what AI allows you to do mm -hmm. is, for, for example, to learn about the person taking a test as they're taking a test, to learn about the reader as they're reading a textbook, and to adapt the solutions that it's offering based on that understanding. And that's something that can help the base of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. It can help people anyone, who, have, really. who went to more privileged schools, anyone. 